If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Never change a winning team. How often have I heard those sentences or even thought it? Today, it's time to turn those two deep beliefs totally upside down. I genuinely believe that if it ain't broken, you should fix it. And that you should always be ready to change a winning team. Let me tell you what I mean. During the last 15 years, I've been working shoulder to shoulder with CEOs to transform their businesses. So while the talk today is about business transformation, it is equally relevant for leaders and to be leaders of governments, institutions, NGOs, and even in sports. We have all heard about how the advances of science and technology and how thanks to Moore's law, we now live in times of exponential, unprecedented change. That is also having effect on how business works. In fact, one out of three companies today will be dead in five years. 50 years ago, the same number was one out of 20. Companies as Blockbuster, Saab Automotive, Kmart, all once leaders in their field, all failed to transform to new realities and eventually died. And the growth from Intel famously once said, only the paranoid survive. It is clear looking at these numbers that managers today need to be paranoid more than ever. In fact, I want to push this even further and say, in this environment, only the paranoid thrive. Managers need to enter what I call a permanent paranoia state of mind. <laughs> it is a state of mind where you constantly question yourself, is this good enough? And when you're at the best, you're pushing yourself to get even better. You might say, isn't this what any good manager should anyway be doing? And yes, but my experience has been that managers are not paranoid enough. In fact, I would say the real strong managers of today are constantly asking themselves, is this good enough? Can I do more? Now, permanent paranoia is not very comfortable. And what I talk about here is not the illness. It's rather when a manager constantly questions the fundamentals of the business, looking for disruptions, opportunities and threats, and is ready to transform the business. 60% of the companies that I worked on so far were either in trouble or had a new CEO at the helm. So it's typically companies that didn't transform preemptively, or where the management were not paranoid enough. So if permanent paranoia is so important, how come managers don't embed it or live by that? There can be several reasons for that. Some companies have a culture that neglects or minimizes new ideas causing them to totally lose out on trends and changes in the market environment. Other companies are so focused on the short term that they forget to reposition for long-term competitive advantage. So, people often ask me, is it possible for managers to be paranoid enough? Is it even possible to transform early enough? And my answer is yes. We call it the three-box transformation approach. The key is to combine thinking short-term, medium-term, and having the right team to get it done. I like to call the first box funding the journey. It is about putting cash to the bottom line within six to nine months to fund the necessary changes in the company, but also to give the organization the self-confidence on its ability to execute. 
As we say up in the cold north, if you don't survive the winter, there is not much point in planning for the next summer. <laughs> One example of funding the journey moves is actually from Shell, the great oil and gas company, that faced with an oil price that has more than halved over the last two years, have dramatically taken out cost, reduced investments in order to retain the strong operating results and ability to invest into the future, including the massive acquisition of BG, British Gas, that will help reposition Shell even stronger. So the first step is funding the journey. The next step is winning in the medium term. It is about setting the goalpost. Where do we need to be in two to three years? Where do we need to evolve our business model to, to have competitive advantage? And notice, we have stopped talking about the long term. In the world we live in, with so much disruption and speed, the midterm is all we can, we can look at. A good example of this is actually General Motors. GM was itself on the brink of bankruptcy just a few years ago. And now it has created the funds to be able to invest into medium term, winning in the medium term. One great example of that is actually their investment into the ride sharing company Lyft. GM has the goal to combine the ride sharing competences of Lyft with the self-driving technology of GM, putting out there a network of self-driving cars or even self-driving taxis. So if funding the journey and winning in the medium term are the two first steps, but that's not enough. You also need to have the right team, right organization, the right competences, and to manage the transformation rigorously to succeed. An example of that is the Dutch banking group ING that has transformed their organization into a much more agile setup in order to cope with the changing customer requirements and customers wanting to access the bank digitally. One of their units they have organized from a more traditional setup to a model based on tribes where they take individual hand-picked people with the competences into a squad and they try to mimic the benefits of a startup company with the speed, agility, and entrepreneurship, and without losing the benefits of a large company in terms of functional excellence and scale. Let me now take an example of a company that has transformed using all three elements at once. We all remember Nokia as the company that once dominated the mobile phone industry and eventually had to leave that business. What is easily forgotten is that over its 150-year history, Nokia has transformed itself several times, from the beginning of rubber boots and pulp mills. In 2007, Nokia had almost 40% global market share in mobile phones. They had strong technology, the best operating system, the best phone features, the best built-in cameras, enormous scale in their business setup. In fact, the managers of Nokia were so proud and obsessed about the strength of Nokia that they forgot to be paranoid. In only a couple of years, Nokia went from being the dominating player to almost bankrupt enterprise, burning cash at a detrimental rate. In 2013, Nokia took two steps that transformed the trajectory. They sold the mobile phone business to Microsoft, and they used part of that funding to invest in their networks business and buy out Siemens from that business. Over the subsequent three years, Nokia totally transformed the organization and the team. In fact, 99% of the employees today of Nokia did not carry a Nokia badge just three years ago. With the latest acquisition of Alcatel Lucent, Nokia is starting to set an all-new standard and bar for that industry. A 
at the same time, for the midterm, they are investing into the digital health and variable industry. They've just bought a company with things that they plan to roll out globally. Nokia has since the downturn or the bottom in July 2012 increased its enterprise value 14 times, returned billions of dollars to its shareholders. Nokia is again the pride and the most valuable company in Finland. From walking dead to second setting a brand new standard in just three years. So when people hear me talk through this transformation approach in the three steps, they often say, so Lars, this all sounds very interesting, solid, but isn't it also quite well known and common knowledge? And it is. But if it is so straightforward and obvious, how come companies fail to transform all the time? It is through the simultaneous activation and execution of the three elements that companies succeed in transforming preemptively or for the better. So yes, only the paranoid thrive. Transformation is a necessity, not an option. It's either done by you or going to be done to you. If it ain't broken, fix it. Thank you. <laughs>